Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, I'd like to welcome you. This is the true prophet of the Lord. I'm guided by the word of God. I take it as it is. I do not add or subtract. If you happen to hear anything new, just know that it's a revelation that comes from up above. I believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we're talking about something that is very, very important. The Bible says, blessed is the hand that gives than the one that receives. But the title of my message today is coming from the Bible. It says that, you know what? Give what you have decided in your heart. Amen. Give what you have decided in your heart. So many times I've seen a lot of people making mistakes. You find that you get to church. Maybe it's me. I'm going with my husband. I even forget. Amen. I don't even plan when it comes to giving. Amen. <laughs> you find that when I get to church now, I want to ask my husband, do you have money? Do you have money? Amen. It says that the decision of you giving must not come from the second person, but it must come from you as an individual. Amen. It must come from you to say that I want to give. I want to give this. Amen. Unto the Lord. I've seen so many people making mistakes. You find that God spoke to you alone as an individual to say that I want you to go and give your car. Amen. Once you have decided that I want to give that particular car, there's nobody that is going to stop you. But if you are undecided, that is when you're going to go and look for the second opinion. Why? Because you don't trust the God that you serve. The God that you serve says that, trust me, test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Here I was speaking about tithe. Amen. And then he was rebuking the priest to say that whenever you bring uh, your offering you bring uh, you bring a lame animal you know you don't give me the best and then he gave an example to say that what you are about to give me can you give to the governor amen so sometimes when it comes to god we don't take him very serious we feel like ah it's just god you know i can even give him two rand amen i can even give him five rand somebody says what is wrong with five rand if you have got a lot of money but you, you decide to give to rand and to the house of God when he has given you a salary. There are people who drive nice cars. There are people who are working. But when it comes to giving, they are not even afraid or not even ashamed to come and give God a coin of two rand. Not that God does not want that two rand. You remember the woman who has given that last coin? We read about her today because that was her last coin. She really, really wanted to give and she decided in her heart to say that I'm going to give God this last coin. But with you, it's because you don't take giving seriously. Don't even feel pain while you are giving that to run because it's nothing to you. It doesn't mean anything to you. God says, I want you to give me the best. Amen. When it comes to God, he just does not, he does not want us to come and give him the lame animal. That's why every Sunday when you go to church, ask yourself that what am I, am I going, what I'm going to give to the house of God? How is it going to benefit the kingdom? And then this amount that I'm carrying as God was asking, if the governor was here or the president was here, can I be able to take the very same amount and give to the president? Can I make an appointment with the president to say that President Cyril, I am coming to see you only to find that I'm carrying that to run to go and see him. This is the gift that I want to give you. Will he be happy? Guru God was saying that I'm giving you an example of an, a human being. That will that human being behave if you are giving them such type of offerings that you are bringing unto my... He says, contempt. When you are bringing such type of offering into my, uh, 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 my altar, do you think that I will be very happy? You need to take your giving to the next level. Amen. You must take your giving to the next level. Yes, I've given an example of you giving in the house of the Lord, but giving does not end in us giving in the house of the Lord. And it doesn't come down to money. Amen. You can give your clothes. You, We have seen God asking Abraham for a child. That was part of giving. Amen. He was saying, I've given you a child, then you can give it back to me. But if you don't have a revelation of understanding that children comes from God, you will hold on to the child that you have. You know, there is the scripture in the book of Proverbs to say that those who are holding on to their money, they will get poor and poor. But those who are giving, I can give you this example. If I'm holding on to this jacket this year, I don't want to give it to anybody. Next year on this YouTube channel, you see me dressing up wearing the same jacket because I don't want to give. The things that you are not giving, you stay with them and they are outdated, they are out of fashion. Why? Because you don't want to give. Winter, when it comes to an end, 
Take the collection of your winter. God bless somebody. Amen. God says we give the best. People want to give people clothes that they no longer want. No, 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 no. You give what you love. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You give out of love. You ask yourself the same question that God was asking. Can you give to the governor? Before you can give to anybody, ask yourself this question. When I give Rodoshto this jacket, is she going to be happy? Amen. Is she going to wear this jacket? If the very same jacket that I'm giving to Rodoshto, if it was going to be given to me, will I be happy to wear the jacket? If the answer is no, then why are you giving to the next person? Next thing will see you offended to say, I have given her a jacket. Not once have I ever seen her wearing that jacket. Some of the things that you are giving to people, they are not nice. That's why people cannot even wear it publicly. Amen. Sometimes you, you want to give, you know, you, you want to give, you want to bless someone to say that I want you to go and buy Miss Meal. You give them two rand. And you know, with that two rand, what, the, 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 the price of the Miss Meal is 10 rand, but they are giving them 10 to two rand. How are they going to afford to buy a Miss Meal? Amen. While you have got a lot of money in your pocket, amen, you are keeping the money to say that I'm not going to give them everything. Somebody will see what to do on the road. At least I've tried. No, when it comes to giving, you give out of your heart. You give out of love. You give with understanding that, you know what, I'm blessing this. That people, when they give, they expect the, the, the same treatment to say that I, I've given you a jacket. You did not give me anything. I gave you this in, in your birthday. You never gave me anything. So therefore, I'm not going to give you anything anymore. When it comes to giving, it, it has no terms and conditions. Why? Because based on the person that you're giving to say that, you know what, if you don't give me anything back, I'm no longer going to give you anything. No, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom. When you give, you don't expect anything in return from that particular person. You expect God to bless you. Amen. God is the one that is going to bless you. That's why I say that it takes a revelation for one to understand that silver and gold belongs to God. Amen. It belongs to God. God says that, you know what, I'm going to bless you. Amen. You know, run over, shaken together. You know that scripture, press down. You know that scripture, rolling up. You know that scripture where God says that there's going to be an overflow. God truly, really wants to bless us. But the problem, we hang on to material things. We hang on to what God has created. Then we don't worship the creator himself. Part of us giving is part of us worshiping God, saying that, God, you are worthy. When you are giving him that five cent, is he worthy of that five cent? Amen. Is this the standard that you have set for God to say, this is what I'm going to bless you with? God says, go out there and preach the gospel. We must also be considerate of the poor. Amen. Communities where people are hungry, we need to go and feed them. Jesus Christ says that if you feed those that are homeless, those that are hungry, you are doing that for me. Amen. I would have seen the kindness that you have shown and God is going to bless you. He says, blessed is a person who goes and gives to the poor because the poor will never give to him anything back, but it will be the Lord who's going to reward that particular person. So whenever you want to give, the decision must come from your heart, not from the, the next person. You decide from your heart. What is it that I want to do? Who do I want to bless? Amen. Who do I want to bless them with? Amen. Don't just, you know, there are people who want to please pastors, you know, and, and just give to, you find that you come to me, I'm giving an example, you give me a laptop, I've got three laptops already, do you think I will be happy, rejoice over the laptop that you've given me? I'll just put it as part of my collection. Sometimes you have to pray and ask God for direction that God, I'm not saying it's wrong to give to pastors, it's good, we love gifts, but sometimes you find that there's somebody poor in the church. But here we are, you know, taking food, giving to the pastor. That one, we see them, they're hungry, they sleep with empty stomach. That is not what God wants. If God has opened your eyes and you can see in our church, there's somebody that does not have food. There's somebody that is sleeping with an empty stomach. Before you can go to pastors, before you can go to anybody else, Start with that one. Amen. Sometimes we come and give a lot in the church. You find that your, your, your neighbors, your, your, your relatives are suffering. They don't even have shoes. Amen. Here you are. You have bought a 40,000 shoe given to the pastor, you know, because you want them to take in that level. You know, you are worshiping these pastors. 
That is not the type of giving that God wants. He says charity starts from home. God says you must take care of your family members. Amen. I remember it was speaking of a widow to say a widow who has got people who can take care of her. She must not be taken care in the church. There are people now who have ran to the church because they are poor, but yet they've got relatives who have got money. Amen. Some were supposed to go to school, but here you are holding on to your money to say, I'm not going to give them my money. It's for my son. How old is your son? He is two months. It's two months now. No, when you can help and you're in a position where you can help, do it. God will never forget what you have done. God is going to bless you. Your children are going to go to school, you know. Let us look around us and open our eyes. I remember my husband, my husband and I praying to say that God teach us on how to give. Amen. Teach us. We don't know what to give. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to us to say that give that television that you have. When you ask God for guidance, he's going to open your eyes. Even in the church, say, God, I want to bless someone. I don't know what to do. God will open your eyes. The Holy Spirit would whisper to say, go and give this. Amen. Sometimes you can be preparing to say, you know what? I'm taking this hundred run to church. And then God will say, don't take the hundred run. Take this and give. Amen. You find that he said, give the fish oil into the house of God. He has fish oil. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes the things that God will tell us to give, it will not make sense to us, but make too much sense to the one that you're going to be giving. I remember in closing, there was this particular couple that came that they look so nice they look so nice and rich you know they came we respected them with my husband but as they were sitting talking to my husband and i the holy spirit began to whisper to me to say that give them grocery you know i gave them boma yonas i gave them you know those type of things the grocery type of things you know then i gave them everything my husband when they left the house was so embarrassed he told me how can you do that give people fish or give them a, a, a grocery like that as if they don't eat in their homes you know those people and then when he was talking i felt so bad i shouldn't have done that because it's what i have decided that i'm not gonna consult him i'm gonna just do it you know when when we we're still sitting with my husband a phone call came from those couple they began to thank us they were in tears to say that we thank the lord we didn't have what you gave us we didn't have what you gave us May the Lord of heaven bless you. Sometimes we assume just because people look nice, the Holy Spirit will tell you, go give her your earrings. Hey, hey that one, who wears what Gucci? And for what? Let me not mention brand food. Who wears the what, what, and what, what? I'm not going to just take this one. This one was five grand. Hey, do what God tells you to do. So you decide what you want to give. Don't ask. That's why the Bible says, this second hand must not know what you're about to give. It's a private matter between you and God, what you're about to give, to give. Amen. Give what you have decided in your heart. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.